I, I was called in for a general audition um, and I was given part of a script, you know, just, just a page. And what I did was I learned it and then um, I did this, this audition in a room uh, with a casting agent and I did the first one and I thought, no bugger it, I'll just throw the script away and I started making up my own stuff but it was based on and I, I just went off my head, I suppose. And, uh, and from that, they, um, they cast me. That, that was about it, really. I don't know, I just, what they call it, I flew it. And I just made up my own rubbish and just, <laughs> you know, as they say, the difference between Sanity and insanity is a very thin line. So you just jump over the fence kind of thing. And, um, and it was, I, I don't know, I just, it's a little like, um, like a room you're too frightened to go into because you don't know what's in there. But once you go in there, you just let it rip because you know, it, it's a question of survival, I suppose. And, um, and that's actually what I did. I can't remember it now, but, but I can remember um, going into a bottle shop in a hotel one day and there was this young bloke serving in the bottle shop. And he looked at me and it was obvious he knew who, who I was. And he went through my routine in the film and he knew the script better than I did and he just did the whole thing <laughs> and it was, it was it was very very funny it was, it was yeah yeah anyway um, people know my part better than I do apparently <laughs> Uh, I, I spent uh, two and a half days, yeah, which doesn't sound like a lot, but it was spread over a period of about three weeks, you know, two days here, one day the next week and half a day the other week, so I wasn't with the main shoot, I was on what they call, uh, oh, what do they call, second unit. So I got to see, one good thing about it was that all the stunts were done on second unit, so I got to see all the stunts, which was interesting, actually. So that's, uh, but yeah, I, I wasn't with the main body at all. No, no, I, I can't drive. I still can't. Uh, I, I did. I did drive the car in the end, uh, and the Kennedy Miller Organisation bought me uh, sixteen lessons to drive. And um, I think, I'm not sure, but I think money must have changed hands or something because I, I hate driving and I still do. But once you get into the character, you know, I didn't know whether I was driving or not and I didn't care. You know, it's sort of want to go nuts, you can do anything, you know. And, um, but of course you can't do that around the streets <laughs> because it's kind of nuts, but... But once I got into the character, it was okay. And um, but all, all the all the uh, the traffic was controlled. It was, I believe, shot on uh, what they call secondary highways. So um, and you know there were safety officers at the end, so it didn't matter. I wasn't involved with other vehicles. I can't. I kind of can't recall now, but it was. The joy, if I got any joy from it at all, was uh, involved with the stuntmen, you know, because stuntmen are a particular breed of their own, you know, and they talk about actors sort of 
they sort of say who's got bottle and bottle is like courage like you know they can do it they can do it they can do it and they, they will talk about they regard actors on a scale of one to ten as as actors have got bottled but the thing was um, I was honest with them and I said look I can't do a bloody thing and there was one <laughs> a, a different film but it was an action film in which I was involved and one of the stuntmen said to the other I, I got told this I wasn't there at the time but I was told this after he said uh, like I said, who are you doubling for? And he said, Vince Gill. And he said, Vince Gill, you will make a bloody fortune. Mate, he can't, he can't drive, he can't ride, he can't fight, he can't run. Oh, mate, you... <laughs> and it's absolutely true. But if you're honest with them, as if I was, it's okay. You know, I, I can't do anything. No, not really, because... Uh, they more or less left it up to me. Oh, so I, I think the they thought, I, whatever it was, I, and I, I didn't my own research. But no, so I was, I was going to put in a sense, on and I like likened it to. I mean, it's very, very Mad Max is very, very similar to the old um, Hollywood Western movies, like. Um, the outlaw comes to town. He kills someone, like the sheriff's daughter, and the sheriff comes back to get his revenge. It's a very, very simple thing, but basically that was it, and I was the... I was the guy who killed the sheriff's daughter or somebody, you know, uh, initially, and the rest of the gang come back to get revenge, and the sheriff takes revenge on all of them. It was, it was a very simple formula, but... Uh, No, not at all. I, I, I thought it might disappear into the fog like most other Australian films do. But I don't think any of us realised how big it was going to be. And, and of course it got George to Hollywood and all of that sort of stuff. Uh, and, but no, I had no idea. Mad Max, in a sense, has, has sort of overwhelmed my acting life. Um, because... All those years in amateur theatre, all those years of Shakespeare, of the great Russian plays, the great American plays, the great whoever plays, and you appear for less than five minutes on one short sequence in a film, and that's your life for the rest of it, baby. You know, that's what's amazing to me. It's not that I want to, I mean, you own whatever you do, but uh, Mad Max would have been the last thing that I would have expected.